In this segment, Dr. Carl G. Stonecipher of Greensboro, North Carolina, reviews with us the results of several studies examining the use of the Intralase platform. These studies have demonstrated the Intralase platform's potential to improve LASIK outcomes and reduce enhancement rates by creating a more uniform flap and a smoother bed. Dr. Stonecipher also reveals how the Intralase has reduced his own enhancement rate from roughly 4% to 1% and how this has benefited his refractive practice. I think the biggest take home message with the Intralase uh, platform to make a more uniform flap is that by making a more uniform flap we're getting a better fit. By making a smoother bed uh, we're getting a better laser ablation platform. In other words when the eczema uh, is trying to treat that corneal surface uh, it's more uniform and I think that, that we're finding these bed smoothness uh, are helping us in terms of outcomes. Dr. Stonecipher credits the intralase with increasing the speed of LASIK procedures and reducing the energy applied to the eye. We started working the intralase at the 10 kilohertz platform and we've gone to the 15 and the 30 and now the 60 and one of the things that it's done is made us faster but the other thing it's done is is reduce the energy that we have to apply to the eye in order to get the same flap. And our flaps are these uniform planar flaps uh, that have the ability to improve LASIK based on the induction of astigmatism, the reduction of higher order aberrations, and other factors that I'm going to show. The Visanti scans now show us that if we look at the difference between a microkeratome flap and an interlace flap, with the keratome we get this deep cut in the periphery that comes up centrally, whereas with the, the intralase, it's a very uniform flap uh, and it's thin and planar. That makes a big difference in how the uh, flap lays down. And Dr. Falks has shown us that uh, in other studies in terms of the biomechanics of the flap and that the flaps created with a mechanical keratome show marked variability uh, and sometimes extreme thickness, whereas the flaps created with the interlays demonstrate more uniformity and more of a standard thickness. Dr. Sarajeva and colleagues uh, at interlays have gone so far as to show now with the uh, 30 and 60 kilohertz platforms that we're getting smoother beds, and those bed smoothness are now compared, and there's an article uh, in the literature um, hopefully be published soon, uh, showing that they took mass observers comparing the microkeratome versus the intralase, and we're now seeing smoother beds with the intralase and mass observers uh, pick the intralase over the hansatome in terms of the smoothness. And the smoothness interprets into a more uniform flap, a better bed in which to lay our custom treatments on, and therefore hence better outcomes. Dr. Stonecipher shares his insights on flap efficiency, the variables that can affect it, and how the intralase improves efficiency. Now, when we look at efficiency of the flaps that we make, there's a lot of things that we've got to talk about. We've got to talk about device-related or patient-related or surgeon-related issues. We want a flap that's uh, what our target thickness is with a reasonable standard deviation. We look at the anatomy or the age or the intraocular pressure and other things uh, that can tell us uh, how patients' flaps are going to respond. And one of the things about the intralase is we don't see anatomy affecting it as we've seen with the me mechanical keratome. And then, of course, there's surgeon related factors like corneal hydration, uh, the pack in recalibration, pressure applied, etc. Now, I don't want to denigrate flap technology with a me mechanical keratome because the flaps made with a mechanical keratome have gotten better in terms of, of efficiency. Uh, the standard deviations over the course of time have improved. Uh, we're still at a more uniform standard deviation in my hands with the interlace of the 60 kilohertz platform as compared to what we had on the left side of the slide showing a higher uh, regional variability uh, say with the Hansatome, but again, if you look at the Hansatome compared to the Zyoptics platform, which is the new and improved uh, mechanical keratome, the standard deviations have gotten better.
Dr. Stone Cipher points to the results of FDA trials and a subsequent study which indicates improved one day visions, better contrast, and visual acuity associated with the Intralase platform. Predictability. Uh, primarily what we're seeing is better one-day visions, we're seeing better contrast visual acuity, we're seeing uh, lower induction of higher order aberrations and astigmatism. We presented uh, uh, several years ago uh, that in spherical treatments uh, that the induced astigmatism comparing the intralase laser to the mori and the hansatome is less with the intralase, intralase significantly uh, in comparison, and Dr. Dury and Kazarian repeated those studies and found similar findings. We looked at the U.S. FDA trials in terms of the uh, Wavefront optimized platform. The first clinical trial with Wavefront was done with the mechanical keratome, and the second trial was done with the intralase. And if we looked at, at the surgical induced refractive change with the hansatome, it was almost a half a diopter. Uh, if we look at the surgical induced refractive change with the intralase, same laser, same surgeon, same platform, uh, it's, it's almost negligible. Dr. Stonecipher points to several studies which indicate a significant reduction in enhancement rates for surgeons using the wavefront guided and wavefront optimized platform with the intralase. Let's talk about enhancements and, and what I did initially is I wanted to look at what have our lasers added to the reduction in enhancement rate? So if we look at the Exmer laser platform, uh, this is a study of 92 surgeons with enhancement rates ranging from 1 to 22 percent. And we see with different laser platforms that we see a reduction in the overall enhancement. Uh, the overall laser platforms performed at 6.4 percent was the enhancement rate for the group. But again, with the autonomous, we saw a little bit higher than with the VizX than with a wave light. But if we look at the same surgeon and we look at the same laser platform, uh, this is looking at, at roughly 18,000, 19,000 patients, or excuse me, 18,000, 19,000 eyes, uh, I looked at my enhancement rate with a mechanical keratome and the VizX laser and I was at 4.17 percent. When I compare that to my intralase platform with the same laser platform, I've reduced that down to 1.73 percent. If we take it to the FDA trial, uh, the first FDA trial with the Wavefront optimized platform with the Allegretto laser uh, was 3.8 percent was the enhancement rate. To date, uh, with the same laser platform with an intralase, whereas the first platform was with a mechanical keratome, uh, we're at 0 percent. We have yet to enhance patients on that platform. If we look at the FDA comparative charts over the course of the last several years, trying to compare the laser platforms from zero to minus seven diopters with up to three diopters of astigmatism. Uh, we see that the mechanical keratome with the VizX custom view, the rate is about three percent in terms of enhancement rates. If we look at the mechanical keratome with the Wavefront optimized platform, we see that the enhancement rate is 3.8 percent as I mentioned. But with the Wavefront guided and with the Wavefront optimized platform on the intralays, we're seeing reductions over those original percentage that we saw with the mechanical keratome and we're getting good outcomes. The plus or minus a half range is ranging in the 90-ish percent level. Dr. Binder and Gordon uh, published uh, their results for the VizX, the Alcon, and the Wavelight platform and all across the board have seen a uh, reduction in their enhancement rates uh, from the mechanical keratome to the interlays and this was, happened to be the hansatome. Dr. Stonecipher shares the data from his own practice using the Wavefront optimized and Wavefront guided platforms with the intralase. So if we want to summarize this, um, this is my data uh, with me as the, the surgeon. The Wavelight Wavefront optimized platform and the Wavefront, Wavelight Wavefront guided platform on the intralase I have yet to enhance a patient. If we look at my intralase 30 kilohertz data my enhancement rate is 1.2 percent and overall my enhancement rate is 1.78 percent. Uh, if we look at the intralase and the custom view platform it's very similar to the overall total which is 1.8 percent. Now I'm working with the 60 kilohertz platform in its presence venue and, and the issues with the 60 is I've not had that platform long enough uh, for patients to be out a year and these are patients that have at least been followed up for a year.
With the interlays, I think that for me personally, it's taken my enhancement rate from roughly 4% down to 1%. And that's a huge savings in terms of throughput in the practice. Uh, there's twofold that you have to look at that. A refractive enhancement cost me money to have the patient come back, and that's roughly around $400 and $420 by my calculations. In terms of the bigger picture, though, is I have a patient that feels that the refractive surgical procedure has failed them and that they need an enhancement now. So they're telling other patients that I'm coming back in for a touch-up, and that takes away from the overall wow factor of LASIK. So if I can reduce my enhancement rate by any means, and I believe that the, the Intralase platform is doing that for me, uh, that's going to allow for better uh, patient referral, and it's also going to decrease my costs in terms of uh, bringing a patient back for another procedure. <laughs>